Hello, we're going to do a live stream. Um, I'm working on a garter mum right now, so I'm hoping some people can join in. And I'm just making sure everything's set up properly here. That it's public and everything else. And of course I'm doing it on my computer again, so hopefully we won't have any issues. table in here. I hope the lighting it looks good. Let me bring it up. Alexa, can you open the YouTube app? Hey Alexa, open the YouTube app. Here is YouTube. I can't see my chats on here. Hey Sylvia, how are you? I'm just getting everything set up here. I like to watch it too, so. I'm trying at a different angle. I'm trying over here this time. It looks like the lighting's pretty good. I had a little glare from the window there, so I had to kind of close the blinds a little bit. So, I'm not sure I turn it down. It looks good. It looks like the lighting's good. So I'm working on a garter mum. It's not a full-size garter. It's one with 15-inch um, streamers and stuff, and I got the bottom all done today. I've got all the braids and chains and trinkets and stuff attached and some of the stickers, not all the stickers, I have to cut out the rest, but now I need to do the backer and then I'll attach that. I'm sure I've got everything turned on. Hello Kay, how are you? I'm good. I'm trying at a different angle today, so you have to tell me what you think. Can you see? You can probably see that on there too. The only thing it doesn't show me my chats on here. That's the only thing I hate. I don't know how to fix that or if you can't even fix that oh well hello Amy how are you yeah barely <laughs> I keep telling myself it's only halfway through it feels like it should be at the end it's crazy so the mum I'm working on the garter this is a little under five inches in diameter it's one of the smaller ones that I that I use Usually on the guys, I try to go a little bit smaller on the mum head, uh, just because, or the backers all together. This is like 4.75. And then I've cut, I've already cut my ribbons, so I'm prepared. I cut these at, these wired ribbons at five inches, so I did two of the baseballs and then this one with the baseball pattern. And I've already taken the wires out of all of those, but I wanted to save some just to show, because some people still don't know how to do that. Most of these are really simple. You just have to go like this and get them out. But you don't want to ever leave the wires in for uh, moms. You want a more natural curve and everything. So these are cut at five inches. This is two and a half inch. This is that sparkling. I cut this at two and a half inches long because I'm going to do spikes, so you want them half the length that you cut for the loops because when you fold your loops, they're two and a half inches long. And then I cut the seven eighths inch ribbon at five inches too. I'm gonna do twisted loops with the seven eighths, which I don't do that very often, but I'm gonna show you why. Uh, hold on, let me get the bottom part of that mum and show you guys what I've done so far. bottom so let me just get that all out of the way I went ahead and attached the garter onto this backer there's no reason not to so I made a three ribbon spirit chain and that is just a sticker a big sticker it's glossy so it's protected um, from Hobby Lobby these big ones so and then I hot glued it on <laughs> You haven't been on in a while. Wow, you guys have been busy then. I am doing good. Sounds like you're doing good too with all that good news. So again, this is from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if they still carry those or not. Then I made a whip braid. And this, I don't know how what color it's showing up there. It looks like it might be 
burgundy on there, but it's not burgundy. It's new red, which I use for people that want like crimson or scarlet red. It's a darker red. So if you put it next to the red, it looks red. It just looks darker. But then if you put it next to burgundy, it looks burgundy. It's weird. So I have to like label it on my box so I don't accidentally grab the wrong ribbon. And then, so this is the twisted loop chain that I made out of 7 8 inch ribbon. So that's why I'm going to incorporate 7 8 inch loops on the backer. So it will blend in like this will be on the backer as well. So that'll just kind of incorporate. And then I already had this ribbon and I, I've had it for a couple of years. It's one of those uh, that I did with glitter HTB vinyl, the heat, the heat transfer vinyl. So when I first got it, you know, I made a bunch of ribbons a long time ago and did all these uh, ribbons and I'm just slowly using them and I haven't used this one yet. So I thought I'll just go ahead and use it because they said he loves anything Texas. So I thought that was perfect. So I didn't charge him extra for that because it was my decision to put it on there. And he's into baseball. So I gave him a baseball bat, a baseball. Again, he loves Texas. So he got a Texas trinket. He's a senior, so on the baseball trinket, I had these little um, stickers, and I think I got those at Michael's. It's got a little tassel on there, and they're like, it's got a foam uh, sticker in between to make it like 3D looking, but I thought that'll just add a little senior element there. I have some senior stickers down here, homecoming 2021 there. Now on this chain, this is going to be the name chain, and I haven't done one like this before, and I did make a video, hopefully it turns out, and I can show you guys how I did that. And I actually had to mess around with it a few times because I didn't like how it turned out, and I had to take it apart and redo it. So you guys will see, like, the process of me doing something different and, you know, like, two fails before I finally got it. And so she goes to a rival school. And her colors are navy, navy, silver, and white. So that's why there's navy on this side for her name. And then black on this side for his name. Oops. And she does cheer and she won megaphones where her name is going to be. So that's why there's that. Thank you so much, AG. I appreciate that. So this is pretty much finished. I still, let's see, I haven't added a bell yet. So I need to all have to do that too. And this was just a simple, these are the bows I like to do, the simple bows I like to do on the boys' mums because they're not real feminine looking. They're made with the acetate ribbon. And most of the time I double them up, but I figured black was simple and look cute. And this sticker is from Dollar Tree. These, no, I'm sorry, these are Hobby Lobby. I almost used one from Dollar Tree, but these are the Hobby Lobby ones I got on clearance. It's got like a clear coating on it. And it actually was two layered and then it had the foam sticker in between, but I took the bottom layer off. I just wanted the top layer on it and then hot glued it on. I thought it was perfect for the center of that bow. That's what, if y'all want to see the back. So I just did layers. I did the white and then I did black and that new red on there. But it's got not lots of fun stuff. So now I just need to make that backer. I have some several finished mums uh, that I finished up yesterday and the day before. I think I did most of them. I got the last touches on yesterday. And I um, need to box all those up and try to get them shipped off tomorrow. So I will show you all those and possibly box up a couple just to kind of show you. The uh, twisted loop chain, is that what you've never seen before? I'm sorry, there's always a delay, so it's hard to go back <laughs> a minute. So I'm just going to layer these, because you can't just make a loop out of this ribbon, because it's floppy and it's not going to hold its shape. It's just going to kind of go like this. So... layer that 
and I knew you know using the black that it was going to kind of darken that up a little bit but that's okay I wanted the black the contrast of the black underneath and these are the same size ribbons I was going over just a little bit I finally got staples the right staples for these I ordered somehow ordered the wrong staples for these I think it's because you know when you search for something on Amazon and you put in like I put in B I think they're B8 staples and then you start looking at all the different ones and the prices and then by the time you pick one you pick the wrong thing because they've given you so many options <laughs> But luckily the wrong staples ended up fitting a regular stapler, so I at least won't lose that money. And the uh, correct staples for this ended up being half the price of the ones I bought the first time. So that's like good grief. This one's really heavy, but it's much quieter than this one. And it's going to be nice to have a backup stapler because I use them so much. Um, I just keep waiting to wear that one out because it's at least five years old, if not six years old. And then I run out of staples constantly. And as Connie said, it's nice to have backup staplers so you don't have to keep putting staples in. loud that one is but it's so light so heavy and quiet light and loud <laughs> okay so those are ready now I want to cut dovetails or you could cut a spike on the end Ooh, yeah I think I'll do that especially since at the end of his uh, streamers I did like a spike is what I'm calling it I don't know if that's what it's called or not so you just put the opposite direction of a dovetail so you get a, a point. A little trash thingy. I did some organizing yesterday. I ordered a bunch of, well not a bunch, but I ordered some more organization stuff for my craft room and it did help. I did get a lot of the boxes off the floor that I had on the floor, so that's good. Okay, so I have four of those. And you could do them all the way around. However, you, you could do two different sizes and different colors, however you wanted to do one. Okay, so I'm just doing a single single layer, and it's the same. So let me face y'all. Okay, this one is going that direction, and this one is going this direction. So that's away from me. And this is towards me. And then you just put them together at the end. I'm sorry, I keep, I'm trying to get close up, but I keep getting out of range here. So you make, I like to make a point at the end. I want them to match up and make a point at the end. Don't worry, I'm going to try that again. So it just makes a cute twisted loop. And I I can't remember that I cut. Yeah. Don't go any shorter than five inches on those, though, because it gets more difficult to do them the shorter you make them. But if you do them longer, which I did the chain, I did six inches. So that makes them a little bit longer and narrower. But this is going to be fine for the backer. Okay. Let's see if we can do this again way and then that way so away from me and towards me and then move them to where they make a point at the bottom they match up let me put my super white hand behind it so you can really see it <laughs> and then of course put a staple to hold it in place but you can also go like this I learned that technique from Rhonda's Creative Corner. She has a tutorial for this as well. 
using the bigger ones. So you might find that technique easier. And you usually only see these twisted loops on uh, the 1.3 inch ribbon. Not very many people actually use, do it with the 7 8 myself and I've seen one other person that doesn't mean nobody else is doing it but I've seen on Pinterest only one other person doing them came up with the twisted loops um, but I saw them you know a few years ago and I was like I want to try that and I had several fails before I figured it out and then after I figured it out I still had trouble remembering how to do it hey Monica how are you thanks for joining in I'm doing four of each. I'm not sure how I'm going to place them or anything. I just wanted to make sure I had plenty. Oops. It's funny, this white, <coughs> excuse me, this white ribbon is very stiff. But the black ribbon is very soft and almost satin-like. I mean, I know acetate is a form of satin, but I mean like the soft satin. It's like so close to the soft satin. It's so weird. Um, I don't like it because it's um, making it difficult on braids and chains, like especially if you do like a spirit chain or something that you need good creases on. It's not making good creases. And I, you know, I always put those braids uh, take them in my room, put them on the dresser, and put a bunch of hardcover books on top of them to really get good, good creases. It makes your uh, your braids and chains look so good, especially like a Texas chain, because that one, you know, those points want to curl in. So you will get the best looking Texas chains if you do that. And then spirit chains, the three ribbon spirit chains, some people call those deluxe uh, spirit chains, uh, victory braids, um, anything that's flat like that. I suggest doing that, you know, something something flat and that has weight that you can pile on top and of course clean that won't get your braids and chains dirty. So I've got everything ready. What I'm going to do is attach the little spikes first. And I'm almost doing two there. Again, this is the sparkling and it's kind of curling under a little bit. That can't be helped. Actually, what I can do is go ahead and attach these first, like this, and then put that on next, because you don't have to put these spikes on first, and then it's not gonna curl in. So I'm gonna do that. I need to make sure that I put my baseballs on correctly. Since I have two different baseballs, I wanna do this one like this and this, and then the other two like this. Because it would look funny if I did them here and here. Well, I mean, I'm saying it would look funny, but maybe that would be how you wanted to do it. I'm not afraid to do things different. You guys know that, too. So I always give them two staples right in the center. And I've gotten very, um, what's the correct word, analytically correct on these, on <laughs> using my mat and really lining them up perfectly, which is probably ridiculous, but I just can't help it. I obsess over getting them on even and then the same amount over. That drives me nuts if I finish one and I'm like, that one loop looks like it's sticking out further. That irritates me to no end. Unless it's one of those that, you know, I haven't done a backer in a while where I just start adding random loops and, and and uh, spikes and stuff and I make them all different directions I, or, or her sizes I don't measure them I used to do that all the time and you know they would come out really really unique and different looking for some reason I haven't been doing them like that in a while I don't know if it's because I've gotten into really uh, 
you know, tutorials, trying to really show you guys sizes and stuff. And I don't know, I don't know if I'm just getting into this. Sometimes you kind of get into a funk, I guess. So some of these girls, like I've got a double coming up and then I've got a couple of 30 inch singles. So I think I'm gonna try to um, be different on those. And, and I know two of them I did last year and so I know they're gonna let me be creative. So I have to remember not to be so, you know, organized with at least one of them. So I'm trying to like do the point where it would be kind of rounded like that. Just kind of eyeballing it, make sure it's centered up. do the twisted loops how I, however they start looking good. I don't really have a set plan. I have several months to do for October 1st homecoming. So that is what I'm working on right now. And I need to just really, I've got to a bunch to do. I've got several to do for Etsy, but I'm not taking any more orders. I'm not taking any more orders until the end of October on Etsy. But our local homecoming is October 1st, and I know I'm going to have some more orders. And I'm not looking forward to that. Okay, so I can put them down lower. You know, when you do another layer, I like to go in um, each time. Just be careful in your flower size, like how much you're going in. Uh, if you're going in too far, if you're not going in enough. So you just want to kind of see what what size flower you're using. I will be using a five and a half inch flower, a full one. On these mid-size, I like to go with the fuller five and a half than I do with the peewees because they're more expensive. The mums are. Um, again, they're fuller, so they're going to look a little bigger. It gets more difficult to get in there the further in you go. And you got to be careful about smashing these ribbons. Since they're covered with this, it's not going to show if I get any creases on them. So that way it'll be okay. Oh, that looks cute. So I have enough to do three over each spike. So that spike will just stick out a little bit. And you catch that silver, kind of shine. It's kind of metallic looking kind of holographic looking too it's just a little bit different and I'm not going to do them in the same pattern color pattern I'm going to change it up just try to be random with it Sometimes they get kind of over, it's not doing it as much with the shorter ones, but when you do them like six inches, these seven eighths, sometimes you'll notice they'll go over too far and you just kind of have to move them. But even the one third inch, when you cut them at six inches, sometimes you have to kind of move them around. You see I mixed up the colors. So even if the flower covers up most of that one, you'll see a different pattern. don't have my flour ready. I was prepared a little bit, but not a whole lot. I got my ribbons pre-cut. I thought that was pretty good for getting ready for a live. Okay. The last three. Let me get me a 
while we're out. Let's see. I'm trying to be different on each one. Okay, so that's different and fun. inch flower. Just cutting that off there. I don't know what I have. <laughs> I'm going to fall over. I have a white Chanel stem. I'm trying to reach too far. All right, I just want to put that Chanel stem through there. And the reason why I let go of it is because sometimes it won't push through if you don't let go of it. So we just want it to come through there. Did you guys check out Connie's? Um, it wasn't a live. She did a Facebook live and then she, uh, she did voiceovers on it and later and put it on YouTube. So it was kind of like a live, but she did voiceovers for us. But it was a complete mom, single mom. I think it was a freshman mom. It was really neat to watch her, her and her techniques. So I just made a, a knot there in the center. Make sure it's big enough that it won't pull through. But you want to hot glue it to make sure that it stays and doesn't go anywhere. It's steaming that hot glue's been on for a while. And then I pinch it, I shake it, I turn it upside down, shake it. That way it's not, if you don't do this, then it's going to leave a hole there in the center and you're going to see that knot. So you don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. But even, you know, most of the time you're going to end up putting something on there to cover that up. But just to be safe that it is covered. And I'm putting a big custom cutout on here, so it's really a step I probably didn't need to do, but it's just a habit. It's a good habit to have. But now I have to let that dry completely before I go and attach it. All right, let me show you. I'm proud of his custom cutout because it's pretty awesome. This was the customer's idea. She wanted a jersey with his last name on it because they did not know his... Uh, what his baseball number was going to be, his jersey number yet. So she had the idea of a jersey with his name on it. And so I, I found a jersey on Canva and I just, I saved it and brought it up on my uh, Canvas workspace, which is with the Brother Scan and Cut. And I just outlined the jersey because the jersey had all kinds of designs on it. But all I needed was the outline, so I just outlined it and opened it in my my uh, canvas workspace, and then I did his last name. I got that also from Canva. It was the sports script. They have one sports script, and so then I, you know, sized it to fit on the jersey, and cut it out of the jersey. The only issue I t I have with cutting the things out, the names or something out in the design is you have to save those little tiny pieces that fit in the R's and the A's and the O's. And you know, you might have to use a pair of twizzer, tweezers and try to um, glue that on there. It's a pain. And I used E6000, just a dab. And then again, I put, put like parchment paper or something between them so they won't stick. And then put a bunch of books on top of it and let it set overnight. You want that glue to set good. And on the back, I didn't have to, since I wasn't outlining it, I just had to cut a piece of red and they don't have, you know, the red like the scarlet red or the crimson red. You just have to use red. So this is going to be a little bit more red than the rest of the, the 
the mum, but it's okay. I mean, it's like burgundy. They don't have burgundy. So anyway, I just cut a rectangular shape the size of that and then glued that on with E6000. And you just have to be very careful in all those little pieces. Just barely get any on. I also have a sticker maker, but you can see that's not going to fit in there. But it can be difficult to do like little delicate things too. Because see all that little points? Those are very difficult to do. Uh, Connie's page is uh, the Southern Cottage. Look, if you go to my channel um, homepage and look under community where I put posts, I posted uh, that video of hers. So you'll see it's one of the last posts, like the last maybe three, somewhere in the last three or four posts. Thank you, Sabrina. Yes, so it's real easy to find Connie's page on there. Gave you a link to it and everything. And actually, I think the, the video actually plays on my... Uh, hold on, I'll show you. So just go to my page, and then you go to community, if you can see that. There it is, right there. So you just have to click on it, and it'll open that up. It looks like she's up to 98 subscribers, y'all. That's good. She's grown. So you can actually watch it right there on my community page. Or you can click the link. But I don't know if you can hear the voice or the sound on it. You're welcome. You're welcome. So what I was going to say on this. Well, let me have that. Um, so it would be easier to cut out the name separately and glue them on top of it. You know, like in red. Um, but the only thing is, you know, then you have to worry about. Uh, there is that possibility that when you do more than one layer that the layers can come apart so this you know is more secure that way but this is a bigger pain to do uh, because of all those little things that you have to put in there because if you did the name separately you wouldn't have to worry about all those little pieces but I do more multiple layers all the time so it, it is easier to go ahead and do that and I think but I think this kind of a cooler look when it's you know, cut into that, and then you have a background color. So you get you can have two different looks like that. Okay, watched it. Yeah, it was good. She was too hard on herself about the video and, and stuff, about getting in the way and stuff, though. I was like, oh, we don't care about that. We're just watching what you're doing and watching your technique and everything. I have a couple other cutouts. I've got some in my room that are setting up some senior ones that turned out really cool that I did this morning. So this is going to go on a ring mum. Little roller skate. Isn't that cute? That was just a really simple one layer one. And I just got it like a pocket here on my binder so I can stick all these in at the front so I can quickly see if I've already cut somebody's custom cut out. So I've got two soccer balls that I did. I don't think I've done a soccer ball before. I've got several soccer orders this year. So I was glad I had some soccer trinkets. I had ordered extra soccer trinkets. Whoops. The navy and gold football is real simple. And that's all I have in my binder ready. Here's a little ring mum I finished yesterday that I'm going to have to get shipped out. It's similar to one I did last year, and she wanted it to look like that one. It's just a different color, and I told her it wouldn't look exactly because I never make them exactly the same. She was okay with that. So it's purple and the metallic gold and a little bit of white. So I was glad I did the boot in white because I thought it really popped. And I could have done her in purple or gold. But since there was so much purple, I wanted to do just a touch more gold. So there's her little bell. And then there's little spikes down here. And the zebra, and then the glitter, and then there's little loops. But I did a live stream last year of a 
ring mum with no flower, no streamers, and it had the same cutouts, the boot and the little girl. And I think it was blue and orange, so you guys can look at that if you want to see how I made this. I made it basically the same. I think on that one I used two different colors of tulle, and I only did one on this one. And I think this one turned out just a little bit smaller. Like I said, they never turn out exactly the same. And here is a hair bow mum I finished yesterday. I'm super proud of this one. I think it turned, there's always one that turns out so cute. I mean, I love them all. They all turn out really cute, but there's always just that one every season that I just fall in love with. And this one is it so far. So I originally made, and I did a video on this. I did a video, it's already uh, uploaded to the, the cloud. I'm having some issues with my GoPro, a lot of y'all know. And there's a spirit chain tutorial I did and it won't let me, it won't upload it to the cloud. So I'm gonna have to redo it. But this, I did a video on and it's already uploaded to the cloud. It looks good. I can, I will get a video out on it, hopefully soon. But um, I had already made this bow, which is the regular hair bow ribbon. And then I was like, I have some cute blue ribbon and I remembered I had this chevron wire ribbon and so I was like okay I'm gonna scrap that and I'm gonna do this so I made the, the bow and I showed this on the tutorial how I do it and then all the streamers and I was worried since it was only blue and white and silver that I wasn't gonna have a lot of options for cute ribbons and stuff but I think it turned out super super cute the only thing I didn't show was this little bow which I added after the fact and it's just a simple little cheer bow which I show that tutorial all the time on homecoming mums and put a little rhinestone on there and then this is that holographic star ribbon and I just curled it and I think that was such a good choice to put on there I wasn't sure about it but to me my favorite thing is the bow with the football and then the little curls so anyway I ended up using this too I thought why don't I double those up? Because this is kind of, you know, it's a little bit floppy and thinner and I'm really glad I did that because it looks really full and cute. I'm just super proud of it. I hope she loves it. Oh, thanks you guys. And that little football, what is it about that little football that just makes the perfect little touch? And it's just a little football button you get at Hobby Lobby in the sewing department. Nothing expensive or, or crazy, just a little button. Hey, DJ, how are you? I know, I love that bow. So happy with that bow. And I've got more hair bow um, to do. I don't know that I have any right now. Let's see, I have the 15 inch garter that I'm working on. And then I have three cheerleaders uh, that I'm doing leg garters for. Seen, they're all seniors and they're all gonna be gold and white. So I'm gonna definitely show some lives or, or videos on that. Uh, let's see, another, no, that's that one. So a four inch, a ring with that little roller skate that I showed two more mid-sized senior moms. So I have five senior moms to do for October 1st. That's right now, I'm not, you know, that's not even naming like the local schools. I have another five inch and then, yes, I do have another hair bow mom to do and she wants hers a little bit smaller because the girl's young. Those are the ones I have to get done first. Because those are my October 1st people. Oh, thank you, Alice. I'm doing good, TJ. Hey, Carrie. How do I hide all the staples when I make a loopy bow? Um, so I don't use any staples on like the hair bow. 
and I don't know if you missed it, but I am going to be showing a tutorial for that. I did record, I just did it yesterday, so it'll be a while before I get that up, but um, I sew it when I make those hair bow mums. I use a needle and thread for the center, but you could just gather it and use like a Chanel stem like I do with the wreath bow, because that's a pinwheel bow, and I do those on, I've got um, wreath tutorials like wreath bow tutorials where I do pinwheel bows. It's the same thing, except I take the wire out ahead of time. The only ones, like if, if you saw the garter that I showed earlier, the bow at the bottom, I do staple that, but I just do one staple and then I put that sticker or trinket over it to cover it up. So you don't see that. Okay, I'm, well I'm gonna get it again because I need to attach the backer. There's that little bow I was talking about. That's what I, the chain. Okay, now I'm confused. Was it the hair bow mum? The, the bow on the hair bow mum? Because I did that with a Chanel stem and then glued it onto the ribbon. This one I stapled. So I just formed this bow and then stapled it on. I held it in place and stapled it on. It's got one staple and then I covered it up with a sticker. Does that answer it? <laughs> That's probably nice and glued now. So this. It's got one staple. There's one staple for the braid that I stapled. How do you hide the staples on the loopy chain, Mom? Oh, on this? See, I'm so confused. Thank you. T TJ already always knows what's going on. This. So I just make sure that every time I attach one, I'm covering up the staples each time I go over. And I do have a, a tutorial for this. Like the twisted loop chain, that's, okay, yes. So I just, I start at the bottom and then when I attach the next one, I make sure that I'm covering up the staples each time. But actually, if you look at it from the side, you can see some staples in there. Yes, Amy, <laughs> you all know what she's talking about. Yeah, I don't even worry about the back. I know some people do. Um, Every once in a while I will like do another ribbon on the back, glue it, but most of the time I don't worry about it. But like I said, if you look on the side, you can see some of those staples. They're not, comp because of the way they're made. If it was a girl's, you could definitely put some uh, rhinestones on there, but it's not bad. Like I said, it's only at certain angles that you can see it. There's several ways you can do these twisted loop chains too. You can do them in one long strand, which I thought I did one, but I may have already shipped that off. And then you can, like this one's double, so they go in different directions. Oh, you did. Let me see. I need to add a bell still, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I don't know if I'm gonna do another bow. I just, I did a bunch of organizing yesterday and I moved stuff around so now I don't know where anything is. Instead of having to reach around there to get all my stuff, my bells and such, they are right here. I'm gonna do a big cowbell.
to show you guys what I did. All these organization things I did. It really helped. There's more I'd like to do, but this really, really helped. Okay, so I need some ribbon. Stop touching my face. So, okay, my twine is still over there. I've moved everything around. I don't know where to do it. just cut some soft satin ribbon instead of twine because I did twine for all the other stuff. So really thin. Yeah, it is harder to work with. But when I first started, I had all that because I used to make a bunch of hair bows. And so I had those ribbons in all different colors. And I had, you know, some soft satins and some organzas and stuff. So I used a lot of that stuff at the beginning because that's what I had. And I didn't even know what acetate ribbon was back then. Oh, you guys, when I was cleaning out all over here, I found one of the very first mums that I made. <laughs> I gotta show y'all, you'll laugh. You guys will enjoy it. I think I have more over on this side. Yay, TJ! Still getting lots of orders, so. I've cut off almost all my October orders. Um, hey, Connie, there's Connie. We were talking about you. Not bad. Um, so October 29th is the first date that I'm accepting any orders now. I just filled up the rest of the October 15th and 22nd today. It's just been crazy. We were talking about your video, Connie. Okay. I ended up making those the same length. I try not to do that, but that's okay. That's a bell. Y'all see that? Now I just want to figure out. Now when I attached all these braids and chains, I was holding this thing up like this and doing it. And that's how I do it when I'm not making a video. I either use my easel or I'm holding it up and seeing where they lay before I staple them. That's the best way to know. And you can't always control. I mean, they're going to want to hang in the center. But you can help it look a little bit better if you hold it up before you start stapling that stuff on. I want that to stand out more. So I just want to figure out, do I want it here? You guys can see. Yeah! Yes, TJ hurt herself, didn't you? <laughs> you heard the ching. Whatever it was, that little sound. Okay, sticking together. So I don't usually like to do it like this, where the big ones are going north, south, east, and west. Or as Connie says, a plus sign. I like that too, Connie. I don't know why, I just like having the big loops like this. I don't know how y'all can see that. <laughs> it's so easy, it's hard. See, it's fun too, isn't it? And people love those because they're different. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that my backers are all lined up correctly. Connie, I have two staplers going over here. Oh. See, I've been having trouble with this one. It keeps trying to put out more than one staple, and so... One of them gets hung up, and I have to yank that sucker out of there before I can use it again. That's why I'm thinking something's fixing to go bad on that thing. So, this was the clearance one my husband found for $10. 
finally found the correct staples for it. You guys ever have your hot glue on so long that it's steaming when you use it? Oh my gosh, there's steam everywhere. I hope I don't get any of this on me. certain areas they're like really popular but in other areas they're not popular at all like my area mm -mm. no requests for anything huge like that very seldom have I um, done one more or longer than 24 inch braids around here they just don't want them sash mums. I've seen a couple of girls with sash mums, but it's just not what these girls want. I try to get all the way around with my staples. I try to get in the center as much as possible. And then I don't want a huge gap in there. I want to do some more staples on there just to be safe. Yeah, there are a few of them in TJ's area. covered up. There's barely a hole there for the flower. Okay, my flower's all ready to go. Again, this is a five and a half inch and it's a, you know, a really good quality one that's full. Oh, yes. Seen her on Pinterest. She's got some really big crazy ones. They're so pretty though. Mum, yeah, mum, mumtrosities, mumtrosities, I can't say it. Really, Elaine? <laughs> That's funny. I would have been too short for all that. I mean, still am, but, you know, when I was in school, if we did that where I was from. be careful with these twisted loops too when you put the flower on like that one tucked in it went like this so I just had to be careful I have glued them down before but I didn't realize that they got twisted on there haha <laughs> the twisted loops got twisted how ironic is that so see that's a perfect fit there with those loops if you don't have a perfect fit Add some more stuff. If it's covering stuff up, then don't worry about it. I don't like it when they're like really big and they're covering everything up. And there's been times where I did them like a little too big. glue that down first make sure it's nice and centered since I use these ribbon spool ends there's more wiggle room and the flower could um, attach or get off centered and I don't want that to happen I want to make sure it's nice and centered I'm getting tore up by these staples there's too many of them poking out so I'm just gonna leave that alone for a minute 
and I'll show you a couple other finished ones that I got to get nailed off after I drank some water. I do too. I love it when they fit perfectly. It's like, ah, I did my job. <laughs> Okay, so this mum was a rush order. She had ordered in advance, but she thought their homecoming was going to be like mid-October or something. And then she messages me and it got moved up to like mid or whatever. What, Oct what day am I working on? So it's the end of September. I don't even know what today is. I was going to say September 1st. So it's September 24th, two weeks from today, whenever that is, guys. So I was like, oh gosh, it's going to be a rush order. I won't be able to do as much. But I think it turned out so cute. Sometimes these rushed ones end up being like some of the best. Oh, Alice, you're so welcome. I'm so glad you got to join for a little while. Hello, my sweet Diana. How are you? So I told her, you know, I'm not going to be able to do a custom cutout because that takes a lot of time to design one and such. And I do have a couple of senior ones, but I was just thinking, you know, she's going to be the very last one that I do for that date. And I don't, I can't, I don't want to guarantee her anything. So I was looking through my stuff. What kind of fun thing can I put on the mum flower? Because I told her, you know, I may just have to put like a bow on there or a trinket or something. So I forgot I had these cute red hearts from Hobby Lobby. And I already had the bling attached, so I must have wanted to use it on somebody else's and didn't. And then I already had this design I had made off Canva. And I already had it loaded in my machine. I'd already edited it and everything. I hadn't made a custom cutout with it or anything. I think I made um, a sticker on somebody's mum. So I was like, oh yeah, I have that, so I can put that. I knew I had enough room. You know, I needed to put something on there on the, the middle. So I just cut this out in holographic silver vinyl and I think it's super cute and she does tennis and I had these little tennis players silhouettes so I cut out those stickers when I cut out her name and I think it turned out super cute and it's different. She loved it. When I sent her the picture she loved it. So I made very simple braids though for it. That, the ones that were very quick. A regular spirit chain, you know that's quick. Um, a victory braid that's quick whip whip braids I can I can do that you know it took me a long time y'all don't get upset it took me a long time to get the whip braids down and now I can do them in no time flat so don't get down on yourselves and then I did a loop chain which you know the loop chains can take a long time because they seem like an easy thing to do but they are so hard to get perfect but as you can see I layered them with the navy and the white and I alternated them so they didn't have to be perfect. I didn't have to make sure that they were all exactly perfect because I was alternating which direction the ribbon is. So that's a trick for y'all. If you are tr struggling to get that second layer, if you're doing a second layer, just perfect. Alternate them. It gives it a different look and they, they don't have to be so perfect. You do have to worry about them being perfect going straight down when you're doing a straight one. But that was definitely the one that took the longest. And then I just did bows. I was like, okay, I gotta fill this thing up. So I did. I got this navy organza at Sam's. You know, they got all that Christmas ribbon right now. Super cute. This is some Christmas ribbon from last year I had a little bit left of. Just some red and white chevron. It's a wired ribbon as well. And then this one with the tubing. So big cute bows are a good way to fill in. Uh, so I did, I think I showed you guys this backer, or the streamers, the last time I did a live. I did red and then white and then navy over here instead of alternating all the colors. So I knew over here with the navy I wanted to do more red and white, then on top of the red I wanted to do more of the navy and that made it pop. And then in the center I did, you know, red navy. So that's why it's popping. Those colors are popping like that. So you really have to think about those ribbons in the back. Just gave her a senior trinket, put one little gemstone on it to bling it up a little bit. Uh, 
and then lots of stickers. So she's in tennis, there's the, the mascot, some senior stickers. That's another senior design I came up with on Canva. And then all her trinkets and her bell. The backer turned out super cute. I just did spikes all the way around with dovetails cut in. So that blue and white ribbon, that's a wired ribbon. And then the red acetate. Actually, I think that's the polyfluorantine. And then alternated loops. So it was really simple to do. But look at the back. I want to show you something new that I came up with. Instead of doing a clean white backer, which I did glue another backer on the back, but it was another ribbon spool in that was, you know, like had writing and stuff on it. And I thought, why don't I just cut a, a circle in vinyl and see what that looks like to cover it up. So that's what that looks like. So that's another option for me. Of course, I don't want to do like the white or black because I use so much of that vinyl, but when it's like red one or something, I've got lots of red vinyl. I've got blue, yellow, pink. I've got all different colors, but the black and white I go through a lot, so I wouldn't want to do that or the glitter, you know, the expensive stuff. But I was so proud of this. I think it turned out so good for being a rush order. Gosh, that's so, that's a hard question. I don't know because I work on them. I don't like just start one and finish it and then start another one and finish it. Uh, I think I used to be like that, but for me, I work better if I do them in spurts and I rotate through them. So I really couldn't answer that question. I can tell you that yesterday I finished up, well, I made the ring mum start to finish the hair bow mom start to finish and then I had to finish up like three or four big ones or you know this size when I say big that's medium size let me pin this back up Let me have shown this one in stages too. This is a mini, but it's an extra long and then the bling added. So it's still like, you know, it's not one layer, it's two layers of ribbon. But I don't do any more than two layers with these mini. But since she did bling, I did the diamond dust and then the sparkling silver. You guys can see that. And then she got the victory braid, and I put all the glitter ribbons, the softball, and the volleyball, and then gave her this bling. She wanted silver glitter vinyl. Oh, guys, I used the Dollar Tree vinyl, the glitter vinyl. Worked very well. I was a little worried when it, when it was cutting. Some of it did come off. Like, it, some of it got stuck to my blade, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a mess. It, I didn't have any issues with any of the letters or anything. It was just like a little small side piece that got cut off. But then when I pulled it off the mat, it was wrinkled and I was so worried. But look, it came out perfect. And I did this a couple of days ago and it's like nothing's coming off. I cut her a whole nother, um, I duplicated all the stickers just because I was, you know, I haven't used this vinyl before. So I duplicated all of them and I'm gonna send her that just to be safe. Um, but I, None of it. I mean, it's not, it looks good. I've used their permanent vinyl and haven't had any issues with it. And I've used Cricut glitter vinyl and that's really hard on my machine to cut and to, for me to weed. And this was much easier. And here's the cute bow. Did you forget to make a mom? <laughs> oh, you're a child. <laughs> I know my daughter keeps saying, don't forget about me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're gonna have to come in here and make it yourself. Yes. Yeah, cause like, um, I went through and, and I think when I, you know, when I was just doing local, I would, you know, like, and probably not completely start and finish one but like really focus on one and then focus on another one and then maybe do the stickers and stuff last but with this like I was going through 
let's say I'm working on the October 1st months right now. So I would go through and say, okay, I've got this length and this length and this length. So I'm going to make all these, um, just the streamers. And then I put their name on the backer. And so I would have like seven backers over here with streamers. And then, you know, I would start doing like the top backers. And then I would just have to go over and grab that. So that's been working for me right now. And then, you know, when I feel like making a braid, I make a braid for them. And then I use that organza, that wide organza. It's a one and a half inch for, for a really cute necklace, I think. And that softball is a custom cut out too. They are actually kind of a pain to do because I have to cut the whole design in red and just peel off this little section. And of course it doesn't cut right there, so I have to take my X-Acto knife and cut that right there. And then of course the, the circle is easy, but the baseball little threading there is not easy. Here's the other one. This is another mid size. She's in choir, so I did the music note. And that's a metallic, that's a silver metallic cardstock, which I hadn't used before this year, and I love it. I've used it a few times, and I love it. It gives it a completely different look. So I used the iridescent tubing in there. She does softball in music or choir, so there's a little music note ribbon, the softball ribbon. I did the little homecoming ribbon coming out of here because I didn't have anywhere where you could see it. And then I gave her the whip braid with the silver mylar ribbon, which it's harder to do the whip, whip braids with that ribbon. It, it's really curly and it's just harder to work with. And then I gave her the little tinsel tubing. I did this little loopy chain. Just the random loops. There's no uh, rhyme or reason to the loops. There's different sizes. I do have a tutorial for that. It's a pretty popular tutorial. It's one of mine that has the most views. A simple loop chain there. Simple victory braid. And then just lots of stickers and glitter ribbons, striped ribbons. Oh, here's the uh, twisted loop chain that I did straight and then I did chargers along the side and stickers so that's another version of that twisted loop chain this one's I mean, you know so if you want a skinny one then you can do a double one in this size too and it's fun I'm behind TJ I'm gonna ask I saw a bunch of it yesterday and I don't know what <laughs> Did you add another sticky layer behind the vinyl? Oh, the Dollar Tree vinyl. Now, now I know. No. That I, I attached it as is. Like I said, it was like probably at least two days ago. I wait, you know, I always send the customer pictures and wait for them to get back to me and make sure that everything's spelled correctly and she hasn't gotten back to me. So I'm going to ship it by Monday at the latest, even if I don't hear from her. But no issues whatsoever. Worked great. Um, and I want to say that grad, I'm trying to remember, was that, that, no, that was, that holographic was Cricut. I got some of that on clearance, like red, gold, and silver, and it works really good too. Anyway, just lots of fun stuff hanging off this one. little bit of feather on the end of that one and she got the navy bow too. I'm so glad we found that ribbon because all these navy, you know, navy is just not something you find a lot of. We find some cute ribbons so whenever I find, we find something like that I'm always happy. Have you guys got any requests for a bougie mom. I got some requests for some bougie moms for local. <laughs> I was like, all right. Oh, thanks, Connie. And 
I'm trying my first mum this weekend. Oh, how fun, Kim. Just watch the videos and don't get frustrated. What is a diamond back braid? Oh, girl. Okay, so I've seen people call the Victory braid a diamond back braid. I've, um, the bubblegum braid, I've seen people call it that. And the whip braid, I've seen called that. So, because they all have a diamond pattern. So I don't know like which one, honestly, I, Connie, um, TJ, y'all, do you guys know, a Amy, Kay? Cause I've called different ones that too, because I would see it on like Pinterest or something when I started, but then I would see another one called that. And I was like, I, I don't know. Ooh, pink. <laughs> That's going to be fun and different. Do you have a bunch of pink ribbons? I don't have any pink acetates. I, you know, I've had the chance to buy it, but I just, like, eh, I don't know. Am I going to use that or not? I don't want to buy all that stuff if I'm not going to use it. So this is glued down good, but I am going to staple all that Chanel stem. I just like stapling it too. Makes me feel better. Nice give it too. The uh, Victory Braid has four ribbons. But so does the Whip Braid. Hot glue strings everywhere. These trinkets are getting tangled up. Okay. Alright, so now I just need to glue this clean ribbon spool, which it's got writing on that side, and then it's kind of messed up on that side. So I'm just gluing this down to cover up those staples because they are poking everywhere, and then I'll either cut one from the paper plate, which I may, now that's a little big. That's one of those thin paper plates from Dollar Tree, but I can measure and cut perfect, you know, a perfect one to cover that, and so it's all clean. Or I can cut the vinyl and cover that up too. So since it's got the garter, I like to go ahead and put it in place, and then start gluing. And I do want to cover, you know, I don't want that hole showing. And I also don't want a boy to have to wear that, where, you know, with that hole. That would rub, you know, on your arm. So I never leave, even if I have a clean backer like this or a ribbon spool in that has the big hole, I never leave that on the garters because I'm thinking that might irritate your arm. So I either do the thin backer, clean, you know, solid, or now I can do the vinyl too. I don't know how the vinyl would feel on your arm. Seems like it would kind of stick. Aww. I've watched some, some of her videos too. Well, whenever I see anybody else put out a uh, homecoming mom video, I like to watch. I like to see, you know, somebody else's technique or if they're, you know, because you can learn different techniques and different people no matter how long you've been doing it you might see something you like different and I just find it interesting to see how other people make moms and braids and stuff that is so hot even through that thick cardboard or chipboard so this one doesn't get stapled because it's the clean one 
and it doesn't have anything to do with holding anything on. Sometimes I'll even put a little glue to cover up those staples behind the loops. I know I'm missing some stuff. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, I wouldn't be a fan of that either. But hey, you gotta make what they love. If they love it, then that's it. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. It was a zigzag braid too, or a bubblegum braid. There's just too many names for the braids. It's hard to keep up with what's what. Oh gosh, seven hours is no time at all. You guys, I've had a couple of grumpy people on YouTube lately. You know, it's busier right now, it's homecoming season, there's a lot of people watching right now, but for some reason when somebody can't do a month or, you know, a chain or whatever it is that they're watching my video, it's my fault that they can't do it. And I call them out on it too. <laughs> they get frustrated because they can't do it and then they tell me about it, that they tried, but it was because of my video, because of the crappy video that they couldn't do it. <sighs> you just gotta take a deep breath. Ron has got some good, um, wreath tutorials too. Let's separate in just a little bit. Just a little bit more hot glue in there. I don't like when the backers separate when there's gaps. It drives me crazy. So all I have left, I still have to cut out their names and um, the mascot. I'm going to put the mascot on there. Maybe the school, too, on one of these ribbons that you can see. Where is Oh, there's the homecoming one. Everything's getting all twisted. That's that, what I hate about moving it back and forth. It gets all twisted. Everything gets all twisted up. It's hard to see stuff. So I just need to put something on the back. I need to do the custom cutout and their stickers and that one will be done. I have the custom cutout so I can go ahead and do that. I showed this earlier but not everybody was on I don't think. It's pretty big so I was it's going to cover up most of the flower but that's okay. It's kind of hard to size these sometimes because you know, when you, you look at the size, but it's like from point to point, and sometimes you think you're doing them too much, you're doing not doing them big enough, so it's a guessing game. Sorry, my husband is sending me a text. on there. Not a whole bunch. Set that down. I'm not going to touch it. You do want to attach these flat. That is my suggestion. If you touch... <laughs> Hold on, you guys. Hello? Okay, just a couple of each, I guess. I'm still live streaming. <laughs> All right, bye. He's at a Dollar Tree, y'all, so he's he's buying me some stuff. I can't say no to that. Anyway, um, when you do these, especially if you do something that's more than one layer, and especially if it was a name, do not curve them. 
attach them flat because when you curve them, you are forcing those uh, layers to separate. I learned that the hard way, so please learn from me and attach these custom cutouts flat. That is not a lot of time at all. Yeah, military braids are super easy too. Uh, you can do those very, very quickly. And you could even do a long one and loop it, like loop it here and then have it coming down. Good for you, Leanne. You made the flower. Oh, Layla, she got a name similar to mine. I bet you did. Oh my gosh, baby, we're tired. Yeah, that's what my husband just showed me some pictures. They got their Christmas stuff. I couldn't believe it. They got gold, red, and green tubing. You know how much I love the tubing. I got three drawers here full of tubing. Those are just the ones that are like open that I'm working with. I've got like a whole big box of tubing in there. It's ridiculous. So I don't get in there and start grabbing immediately because I'm going to burn myself and I don't want to do that. So I'm going under the petals after this is almost completely set. Just kind of giving some squeezes and making sure that it's attached good. But I use something like that that has a little bit of weight but not too heavy. Just enough to kind of hold it down a little bit. How cute is that? And then, you know, I do a lot of mine, I'll do kind of lopsided or, you know, at an angle. But if it gets twisted because of the, the way the pe petals are made, you can just kind of move them around and get it to where you want it. So if it's twisted and you don't want it twisted, don't worry about that. Just kind of mess around with it. So this is about done. And you could go a little smaller on the custom cutout. I wouldn't go any bigger than that. You can barely see the flower. For some reason this year I've gone oversized on a lot of the custom cutouts. Last year they were little and this year they're too big. Oh, was your first mum too? Oh, there you go. That was smart. You can make, um, if you have any tool, you can make like a puff. I call it a puff. Add a tool and it, you know, it comes out like this, like the uh, little finger mum that I did and so it kind of looks like a flower too so sometimes you can use that as well oh my gosh you see it's spreading the mums are spreading out there's I've got several orders in Oklahoma um, I did get my first order for Arkansas I was surprised since they're so close that they don't do them um, but I've gotten them from Alabama, from Florida, California, Michigan. So they're really spreading out. People are starting to do them more and more. That sounds like fun. But you, know, see, you need to do little tutorials on, on those flowers. People would like to see that. So when I attach their stickers, I do um, his name in one font and I do her name in another font, especially if I'm doing a chain like this where they're real close together because that's really going to make the two names stand out apart from each other so they don't look like one name. Because you know a lot of times you can do a chain something like this and you can do whatever word, like if you were doing homecoming you can do it like this so his name would be like in a sports or something or a blocky print, I can't remember a font. And then hers is going to be in a real pretty font. So they're, they're going to really stand out. You can also use like two different colors. That helps them stand out. I will probably do them both in white. Like I said, I use two different fonts. So it'll be cute. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. You're like I'm doing your hair. <laughs> so 
and see what everybody else is putting up on YouTube. I had a lady comment just a little while ago. She wanted, she said, your videos are coming up on my feed and I have no idea what homecoming mums are, but it sure is interesting. <laughs> And then she wanted to know the history of the mom of mom, so I'll give her a quick little history. Ugh. So my craft room is fairly clean since I organized yesterday. I'll try to give you guys a little view of it. Move my little funky chair out of the way. Okay, so that's on the other side of my table. And I didn't do much over there. I just moved a lot of the stuff that was up on those shelves over to here on this side. So that opened up some room and I was able to put more stuff. And there's a little bit of space, which is rare for me. I didn't really do anything to my table. My table's still really crazy. Let's see. Over here, I didn't do too much. I got, an, I had another one of these in my closet that I wasn't using, so I put all my stickers, like all those uh, Dollar Tree stickers and Hobby Lobby stickers, the sports stickers, and then I cleaned out my basket, it was really bad, and then I moved my printer over there, which I, I got a new printer. I'm just going to wait till that one runs out of ink before I put up my new printer. Ooh, how fun. I actually, I love Blake Shelton. Uh, I thinned out those two cubbies over there and I just stuck some empty containers in that one. So I had a bunch of stuff piled on the floor. I got all that stuff off the floor and now you can't see that. And then right here, this is a wine rack. So I needed something for all those big rolls. I had them in that cubby over there or the cube over there. And every time I pulled one out, they kept getting bent and stuff. And this didn't work as well as I wanted it to because these come undone really easily. So I had to zip tie them shut. And the big rolls won't fit in here. Like the really thick ones won't fit on the ends. So I had to use, but I put that one in there. It worked. If, if That's all my big rolls. One big roll over there. So all but one fit over here. And then I got a box of ribbons over there. But that helped clean all that up. But over here is where the biggest difference is. Those shelves. My son put those together for me. I had a hard time finding shelves that would fit on top of those cubes, which I got those from Lowe's, I believe. They've got the six cubes and then I got the baskets for them. So I needed some shelves and I was hoping the printer would fit on there but it wouldn't um, but still I needed all that space and then I got flowers and stuff on top that I don't use very often but now I can see everything I've got extra ribbons and there's still a little room which is great you can see all my Dollar Tree vinyl over there that's all the glitter uh, there's some holographic and then there's some solid colors over there that I haven't opened yet and then all my little containers that have like my gold trinkets are all over there, my elastics and all that. So, and then on the bottom, that little space that was perfect for all my glitter cardstock and my printer paper, just worked out really, really good. And I got most of the stuff off the floor, which I was happy about. I still have a little bit of stuff, but it looks so much better over here. So much cleaner. But I do need my ladder to get up top. And then, of course, there's my ribbon things. And I did have to reorganize those, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. But that's all that. It looks so much, it looks bigger in here because of all that. Oh, underneath I did. Let me move it to show you guys. So I did the little shelves the little drawers the plastic tote drawers the three drawers high 
Sorry if that made y'all dizzy. Anyway, I ordered those from Amazon. They're, they came in, they had two packs, and I ordered two quantity, and they were supposed to all be white. I wanted white because my, you know, my cubbies are all white. And then everything else is kind of gray and blue. But for some reason, I got one box that was black and one box that was white, so that's okay. They're under the table, who cares? But now, so now I've got my tubing all in one, I've got tinsel, and then all the bigger or er, well, ornaments and trinkets and just extra ribbons, and it's so much more organized. I got extra hot glue guns. It's just so much better. Uh, just get like generic ones that say, there's some that say homecoming, there's some that say teen spirit, number one, um, there's one that's like the, um, the goal that says touchdown, there's some that just say touchdown, um, i trying to think, our team rocks, there's all kinds of generic trinkets that you can use, so that's what I, that's what I use, and I always hate when I get an order like that and then I'm, you know, scrounging through all those trinkets trying to find some generic ones to use. But you can, a lot of times you can, you know, people don't care if you put football ones on if they don't play football just because it's football homecoming. So it's okay. You know, a lot of people will, even girls will request some football trinkets just because it's football homecoming. So they don't have to play football to get fo football trinkets. leave anything out on my room it's so oh gosh so much better so much more organized I'm so happy uh well the mums I really I'm pretty well self-taught on everything um I started crafting I want to say I was still a teenager when I started crafting you know I took art and stuff in school and just yeah I've always been kind of crafty and then I did my own flowers for our wedding and I had never done you know anything with flowers never made corsages or boutonnieres or anything I made my own bouquet and I think I got like a little book that they sold at Walmart that showed you how to make stuff because you know we didn't have YouTube back then but yeah, I just kind of learned on my own, just started making stuff and just, you know, kept learning how to do it. You just learn from your mistakes and the more you make, the better you get. Same with the homecoming moms. I just kind of had to figure it out on my own. There are a few, you know, there were a few tutorials out there, so I did get a little bit of information. And then I've worked with people that, uh, a couple of years I was, or not even a couple of years, a couple of seasons I was, I worked with some other people that do floral designs and stuff, and so I learned some things from them. You know, you can always learn from people, no matter how long you've been doing something. Oh, I get, I get like, you know, I'll be like a workhorse for a little while and get, you know, a good portion done on a mum or several mums and then I'm like wiped out and I need a break <laughs> and then I come right back and do it again and I take like three breaks during the day and then come back and do it again until it's time to go to bed and I've been doing that for what six weeks now and it's going to be at least another six weeks at least I got some orders for November 5th so I know I'm going that far at least I told somebody I wasn't going to come up for air until Thanksgiving, and that's probably going to be true. Do you guys have any questions or want to talk about anything else? I'm getting like, where I need a, a break. I just have to, you know, go walk away from it for a little while, even if I'm not you know, hungry or tired or whatever. I just, sometimes I need to leave the craft room for even like 10 minutes and then 
it just gets me motivated again and I'm good to come back in and start really working again. Oh, TJ, that is super cute. I just opened it. I saw, you know, the notification come through, but it didn't say there was a picture. That's super, super cute. Is that a peewee? It looks like a peewee. I'm trying to see. Or a mini, I should say. I love the military braid, the layered military braid. So cute. And the twisted loop chain. And you love those love chains. You're good at them. Here's her little mom for her Etsy listing. Isn't that cute? So cute. You're going to sell a lot. You need to get that listed. I've turned more people down for uh, turned away more people for their listings. I mean, for, see, I can't even talk now. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I love that bling, too. I'm trying to get a close-up of it. That's cute. It's not letting me enlarge it for some reason. There it goes. Super, super cute. Yeah. They make me nervous still, too just because there's so much work. No, that's super cute. You're going to get a lot of orders with that. I mean, I've already told some people that I've turned away. Check with TJ. She's supposed to be <laughs> having a listing. Yeah, see, I love watching other people work, too. Be creative and stuff. It's just, it's, it gets me motivated to be creative. So whatever it is, it doesn't have to be like this or, or wreaths or whatever. I mean, just whatever it is that they're being creative about. I just find that interesting. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just got a message from uh, one of these moms that I was waiting to hear back from. And it's the girl, not the, not the mom. She said this is her name. Thank you for your hard work on my mom. I love it and can't wait to wear it. Isn't that sweet? Oh my God. See, that makes all the the rudies, <laughs> I call them rude people, that makes it worth it. You have to deal with rude people all day. That was so sweet. I made her one last year, so... That's always, I love when people come back to me, but it's always like, then there's that little bit of panic or, uh-oh, how am I going to make this one better? They loved it last year. How are they going to, you know, how am I going to outdo that one? But, I, and I was worrying as I was making it, I was like, that one last year was super cute. How am I going to beat that? <laughs> Yes, I love military braids too. Especially, you know, when you can layer them and stuff like that and kind of change them up. I'm not crazy about the double military braid. I mean, it's kind of cool, but I'm more of a classic girl when it comes to military braids. Classic, but with multiple ribbons. Those are my favorite. I do have uh, some Stampin' Up! stuff and, you know, other Stampin' crafting or stamping and card making stuff. And I do usually make my own cards for, you know, whoever's birthday or something. But sometimes I just don't have time. But for Mother's Day, every year I always make the Mother's Day, the Mother's cards. It's just like a tradition and I'm not, you know, that if I'm going to make any cards throughout the year, it's going to be those Mother's Day cards. I used to go to like Stampin' Up! parties and stuff. That was fun. But I haven't been doing those as much. So I have like two 
two cubes over there are dedicated to rubber stamps and such. Oh, you're welcome. I know I love those. I need to make some more. I just can't remember like which direction to make it so because sometimes you have to turn it upside down, you know, backwards to see the layered. <laughs> I just haven't figured it out. I haven't done them enough to really stop and think like, you know, when you start making it, you have to remember which direction were those so I can remember which, you know, how it turns out. I guess if you did them on both sides it, of the ribbon, the smaller ribbon on both sides of the bigger ribbon, it would it would turn out on both sides, but that would be a lot. Okay guys, well I'm going to get off here if nobody has anything else to say. I'm, the reason why I get quiet is because I wait for, since there's a delay, to see if anybody else is going to talk or chat. It's been a long day. It's been a long six weeks. Just morning to night and doing months. That's what I keep telling people. It's just been day and night. I'm going to be so tired of moms when this season is over. <laughs> the layer in the front and push push it through the front that helps me remember okay okay I'll try to remember that I need to make one for somebody's one of these next ones I do I need to do a, a layered military braid and do that now the ones that I did where I used the same size I had that figured out and I've got it on the video so I show it like two different ways that you braid it like however you layer the ribbons, how it turns out. Um, oh my gosh, Lucy's getting crazy. She has like wild spurts and she goes crazy. Thank you, Leanne. I appreciate that, I appreciate you watching. Appreciate all of y'all. Let's go through here. Lucy, will you calm down? Do you want to come say hi? Lucy, come here, come say hi. Come here, right here. Come here, look, say hi. Can you say hi? <laughs> look, say hi to everybody, show them how cute you are. Okay, now she's licking my fingers while I'm trying to. All right, y'all. Lucy says goodbye. Uh, let me show Holly too. I can't just show one and not the other one. I mean, Holly got a haircut recently. Say hello. Those are my buddies in here while I'm crafting. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, thank you, TJ. I appreciate y'all. Leanne, TJ. Let me go back and see who all was on here because I can't remember. Kim, I know Connie was on here, and Amy, and Kay, I haven't seen, heard from Kay in a while, she was on here earlier, Diana, some people may have had to get off, Carrie, yeah, there was somebody else, Alice, I know Alice had to leave, Sabrina, Monica, Sylvia, I think that's everybody. AG, thank you guys so much for joining in and watching. I appreciate all of y'all. Uh, you just, my fur babies are so sweet. Thank you guys. And I will hopefully do a live stream next week too, maybe two, at least one. I'm trying to do them weekly. And I'll try to get some videos edited so I can upload those. I have one that I just need to do voiceovers, but I just have not had time to do the voiceover. And then hopefully I can work on some other ones. So I will try to get those loaded up. But then I am doing these little shorts with some of the, the moms that I've done. So to give you guys something. 
And thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of y'all when you come in and chat. It makes it uh, more fun and it just makes the time go by better. It's like having somebody else in here with me chit-chatting, you know, while I work because I do like that. Sometimes I want my peace and quiet, but then sometimes I want somebody to, to chat with. That's fun too. So I appreciate y'all joining in and chatting. It always makes the live stream so much better. I appreciate y'all. All right, guys.